Rangeland fire is explosive. I think people who haven't experienced it really can't conceive of how fast those fires move and how intense they are. The fires over the last couple decades have become bigger and stronger. And what we're seeing now, once we burn an area and we start to have some invasive annuals come in, then that changes that fire cycle to where it's every 10 years or less. All of us have seen fires engulf hundreds of thousands of acres in a couple burning periods. That's the reality in BLM these days. The rangelands are broad sweeping. They're vast. BLM manages somewhere uh, in excess of 240 million acres. Primarily, that is sagebrush ecosystem. You see the mule deer and the elk. You have a variety of vegetative species, grasses and forbs and shrubs that are very important to the wildlife and for livestock grazing and a number of other uses. We have very nutrient-dense grasses and native plants that allow our cattle to graze. And one of the best ways to keep a healthy landscape is by ranching. And that's what we do here and are very proud to do that. It was one of those summers, everything was extremely dry. We'd had this trip planned to go to my nephew's wedding. And so we flew to Alaska and we had dinner and we called home and the soda fire had blown up. We flew home and when you drive into the valley and you see emergency lights on fire vehicles, it's very nerve wracking. You've got your livestock, you've got your family. It burned right up to the house down by the river and then it came back up here into the valley. So it's traveling 15, 20 miles at a time. To this day, if I am coming home from town and I see a wisp of smoke, my heart starts beating fast. It just, that's something that's not gonna go away. That wisp of smoke can turn into something catastrophic. Fire ecologists would say rangeland fires typically should occur in a, in a given area from anywhere from 75 to every 150 years. What we're seeing across a lot of the West with the spread of invasives is fires happening, you know, 25 times more often than they should. Cheatgrass is incredibly flammable. It burns like gasoline. It just depends on the site and the igneous sources that come along, but once the invasives have become dominant on a site, that fire cycle has changed dramatically and we're way out of the range of what normal was. If we can't use that landscape, if we can't renew our grazing permits over the next few years, we're gonna have to cut back on our numbers. And when we cut back on our numbers, we're not gonna be profitable and those rural communities aren't gonna be profitable. Oftentimes the cost of those fires to suppress are considerably less than the cost of rehabilitating the ground. But the bigger costs are the impacts on communities, the people who depend on those rangelands for their livelihood, and the loss of recreation, the loss of game, the loss of critical watersheds. If we don't break a cycle, we're never going to reestablish our normal habitat or the habitat that we want out there. So we need firefighters, we need suppression efforts. But we need to realize that uh, huge investments need to happen after fires are done. So if we can have a healthy rangeland and keep those invasive species out, then when we do get these fires, we don't have the catastrophic fires. I think it's up to us 
you know, especially from the state and the federal level, is to bring our recreators and our sportsmen and our conservation groups and our livestock industries and our mining industry to the table to have those uncomfortable conversations on how to navigate our natural resource industries moving into the next century.